Hello everybody, welcome to lesson number eight of your garden design module. This is the theoretical part of the sketching process. Don't worry, I am going to do the practical as well, which you'll probably be more hooked to that. But this lesson is designed just to show you uh, what to expect and a few kind of ideas that are theoretical before you get to the sketching process. Um, in my opinion, the sketching process is probably the most important part of you being a designer because it's the breaking point between having visited a garden and presenting a finished product. It's only in the sketching process that you will break through and that you will get ideas and put them on paper, even though they, they're only on a sketch form. Once you have those ideas on paper, it's actually fairly easy to decorate that idea and produce a finished product. But it's this, this part is the breaking point. So let's get started. First of all, uh, I'm going to move my video here. Yeah. You need to break the ice of the page. You will be confronted with this blank page and you have to draw something. You have to put ideas together and you're going, oh my gosh. What will I do here? So you have to break the ice and that's rule number one. It's just draw anything, anything, just a line, a square, is there anything at all, anything at all, so that it doesn't become a blank space anymore. So now that you have analyzed the site and you have asked the client the relevant questions, you have understood the features that are needed, in the garden, you now can start the sketching process. And you will have so much information in your head, like your client telling you, oh, I don't want that tree and I want a new uh, water feature and I want a vegetable garden and my kids need to, to kick the ball and play football and, 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 right? On top of that information, you have to contend with horticultural practicalities. Is the soil good? Are the plants going to need a shelter for wind and so many things? Well, you start by simplifying. Start with only three items that you're going to give a shape to. Only those three items. The three things that most people end up wanting anyway. A patio, a lawn and the leftover space, which is, lo and behold, planting patio, lawn, and planting areas. And don't give any attention to anything else. Don't become overwhelmed by these, by these other thoughts. That will come later, okay? So let me just bring this down a bit. As you do the above, the patio, the lawn, and the flower beds, you have to take into account that the patio usually takes about one third of the total space of the garden. It would be too much to take the half of the garden being the patio and the other half being the lawn. It's better if you just take one third to be the patio and the rest could be the majority of it lawn and then a small amount for plants. Of course, that's only a rule of thumb. It will vary depending on if your client wants large amount of planting or they might say to you, I don't want a lawn at all. Or they might say, I don't want a patio, I don't need a patio. So, of course, you have to gauge this depending on the type of client and their wish list. But for the most part, those three are essential. So, avoid drawing flower beds first. Because you end up creating island beds, island gardens. So, you have this square with blobs in the middle, no cohesion. So leave the flower beds for the end, yeah? Start with the patio. Why? Because you know where it goes. It goes straight away from the sitting room, normally. Normally people want to go from their dining room or sitting room or whatever area straight away into the uh, relaxation barbecue area. They don't want to walk across the end of the garden. Now, sometimes that is the case. Sometimes a patio could be at the end of the garden, maybe because it's the only place that has uh, sunlight. 
Yes, but for the most part, you know that it goes near the sitting room. So you start with the patio, get a shape to that, then move on to the lawn, it's the second step. And finally, you don't even need to draw flower beds, you don't. It's the leftover space that's, that's going to host where the beds are. So I'm going to show you now uh, an example of how this process starts little by little. I'm going to do it using shapes rather than drawing, okay? Remember, in the practical video, I will show you by my hand the actual drawing of this sketching process. So let's start with looking at uh, something that you draw on the page, okay? Imagine this is your page, you broke the ice, and so you start with three squares. Why three? <laughs> three squares or rectangles or whatever because they are going to make it less monotonous than if you just draw one square. One square to represent the lawn becomes very, very boring, isn't it? And everybody can just draw one square. But if you do any large size rectangle enclosed with a medium size rectangle of a different shape, sort of shorter or whatever and then a third one and you merge the three of them meaning that some of the square here invades the space of the other one well now the outer line of this becomes the lawn isn't that an interesting concept but you put that inside the boundaries not right up against the boundary put it inside the boundaries of your property your client's property. Okay, so you have a lawn now. And that combination can vary. I mean, you can take, uh, sorry now, <laughs> you can take this rectangle and make it longer and shorter. You can then take this other one and make it wider. You can take the, this one and put it in another position. You know what I mean? You can play uh, musical chairs with it. And in fact, one of the things that works really well that I would do if I was you, just cut out pieces of paper with different rectangles and move them around on the table to see what different shapes you come up with. Then you add the patio. So as I said earlier on, the patio becomes a one third, so way smaller than the lawn. But it is the exact same process where you choose three rectangles and you put them together, squeeze them together and put them somewhere near the lawn. So now the outside space becomes the patio. Do you know what I mean? You will, you will eventually erase the inner lines, those lines there in, in the middle. And then you have the leftover space. Lo and behold, the leftover space could be either another flower bed or it could be a water feature or something like that. And then the rest is plants. You see, you didn't need to draw a flower bed. They were already drawn for you. Why? Because it was the leftover space between the boundary and the lawn. And there you go, your first design, happy, easy, and uh, it didn't take too long, did it? So you could do the same, but this time using informal shapes. If your client doesn't want formality, which is normally straight lines, well, you can use informal shapes using uh, the tear shape or the kidney shape or the shamrock shape, okay? And you can merge those similarly to, to form the lawn and to form the patio. So here is an example of a lawn with a kidney shape and a patio that has the similar shape because they belong to the same style. So patio again being one third of this overall shape, size, then the lawn being two thirds. And notice that the boundaries is still quite far. So the leftover space is the planting. Happy days. Now we have an informal design. So basically with formal sketches you would use squares, rectangles, 
circles, because a circle has a perfect diameter, and triangles, quite difficult actually, to create a design that looks beautiful on triangles. It's probably not very common. Or you could use a combination of the above, maybe a mixture of circles and rectangles. Don't overdo it though, yeah? But then for informal, you would use kidney shapes, tear shapes, and oval shapes. And a combination of those would create a flow of movement. Again, don't panic, don't worry, you will see me doing this sketching process live. Right, so here are examples of combinations, okay? So I'm going to show you a good few combinations of these three rectangles. Um, and I, I always choose three because they would be more balanced. Large, medium, small. Okay, three rectangles, different three rectangles, different three rectangles, different again, because I have now put them at a diagonal. Interesting, huh? Different diagonal, different diagonal. Circles, so three circles, large, medium, small, intertwined, maybe two. <laughs> ovals, you can use ovals as well, so that you have Again, always the rule of thumb is the large, medium, small. Sorry, I'm just going to move it up. Uh, ovals. And then you move on to the kidney shape. Let me go up to the corner. The kidney shape, I use it a lot. And the reason is that you can have many variations of a kidney shape. You can have it so that that part is really chubby and uh, wide. And you can have it that end, ends up in a little pointy bit or not. You could round that. You could actually put like a nice specimen tree right in that gap. So it gives you a lot of kind of uh, play. So two kidneys, one the patio and one the lawn. Another two kidneys. And then you can just simply have fun and play, mix and match and see what comes up. So basically, you don't have to wait for inspiration. You, can't, you, you, you don't have to have a blank page in front of you. You can put all the shapes and play around with them. And as I said, if you cut out different um, paper shapes and move them on the table to see what comes up, that's what your imagination will actually fly. So the next is I'm going to show you some examples of the sketches that I would have done over the years in some of my designs. And originally, the way I did it, and very few people do that, but the way I did it was that I um, gave my clients three options before they settled for one. So I would go in and using a A4 path, I, I would actually get an overall shape of a garden and then a completely different idea to the first one. So as to give them my client options. So no, normally I would produce three options to my client, show it to them on an A4 path, um, kind of rough, and then they would say, oh yeah, I'm really attracted to this particular idea. And if that's, that was the case, then I would bring that into proper design, really decorated and that kind of thing. So these are the examples I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, look at the following examples and remember that the sketch or concept plan is only the initial idea. It's rough. You don't have to decorate it. You do not need to decorate the sketch, okay? Decorate meaning spending too much time in the type of planting, the drawing, the representing the paving. No, don't do that because your client might say, I don't like that sketch. So you wasted time if they don't like it, okay? So it is from here that the master plan will eventually develop. So this is um, possibly the hardest part of design, as I said uh, in the beginning, because it's where, where you need to put all your thoughts, all your imagination at play, okay? So if you break through the sketching process, the master plan is not a problem. 
So we have a, an example that I picked up from the internet of what a sketch could look like. And it's just these kind of ideas where you roughly show the overall shape of the lawn, uh, where the house would be, and then have these blobs to represent maybe the hedging or the plants in around the outside of the property. Maybe that could be the lawn, the a patio, a second patio, Maybe this, whatever it is, it's rough. It's not an actual finished product. That's another example there with your rough ideas. Another example with more formal ideas. And so now I'm going to show you real life examples that I've designed. Mrs. Anne Gibney, she's one of my favorite clients. So faithful. <laughs> I have, uh, I started designing for her in 2003. And I've gone through all her family, her sons, her daughters, her cousins. Oh, I've designed so much for the Gibney family. But I started in 2003. And sorry, I'm going to move myself here at the bottom. So I gave Anne Gibney four sketches. And these are they. This represents the actual house. And this represents a, a work shed that she was building and at the moment the, the day that I actually visited her house so the whole garden was between the house and that shed and in this I mean I'm not going to go through explaining absolutely every element but basically whatever you see the this kind of I can't find my mouse <laughs> this kind of drawing that represents patio so that's patio area patio area Anything blank means lawn. Uh, and then obviously this is the planting areas. It's two levels because she wanted levels. So I gave her steps on this one and a curvy path of gravel. So that's a curvy gravel path, steps from patio to patio and then the lawn. So now that you know what means what, patio, patio, gravel, lawn kind of a diagonal look this one is more sort of curvy this one is more straight lines she liked the straight lines so i went ahead and i drew the last one so this is the three-dimensional version of her garden which is fully constructed and fully grown now and i only went a couple of weeks to see it and it's fantastic it's beautiful I think. <laughs> so this is it here now. It's a water feature that works in a way that the back waterfall looks as though it's joined to the bottom waterfall when you're in the sitting room. So if you, if you were in the sitting room in the sofa, it would look as though the two waterfalls are one on top of the other. So that's there about four years ago. I obviously had this PowerPoint presentation ready, but the pictures of now, they look even better. So this is the same garden when you're looking at it from a different perspective. Okay, there's formality. She liked the formality in this garden and that's the water feature there. Mrs. Linehan, this was one of my most brutal designs. <laughs> one of those that I'd be embarrassed if I was to get embarrassed at these things, I don't. Um, I actually am really good at, at recognizing when my bad designs were there. Just to show you that design evolves from the, you know, kind of basic bad designs, maybe good, mediocre, and then into the really good ones. So Mrs. Lenehan, I think that was 1990 something anyway. <laughs> you can tell, can't you? But anyway, I did give her three different sketches. So this one where she had just like that's the house and that's the shed, planting areas, this is a patio and here is a trampoline that was buried on the ground. So this is idea number one, number two, number three. She went for or number four, number five, number six. I gave her loads of ideas, but this was the finished product. Awful, isn't it? Now that was the day of plant that it was planted. Now I'm sure it's very mature. I can't go to see this client anymore because she sold the property 
to somebody else and uh, she recently actually called me for doing another design for her large garden in Nays. But uh, this is now obviously, it will be fully matured. Mistakes I made, oh my gosh. To put the uh, trampoline on the ground was a good idea, but to have a stone flower bed beside it in case you fall and you hit your head against the stone, really, really bad. Actually, I encourage you to be totally critical with this design ideas. Okay, so there you go. Not a good design idea. Next one, Mrs. Shannon. She just wanted, it's a, it was a kind of tiny little garden and she just wanted tear shaped lawn, a path to the shed and a circular path. You're very simple. And that's it there. Mrs. Marin, I just got carried away. My gosh, I gave her about seven different sketches. But notice, I mean, I don't put a lot of effort in the de decorating the sketches. So uh, oval, a kidney shaped, a whatever shape that is, a lemon shape. A bit of um, a formality there, another kidney shape, but different than that one. And yeah, they're all very different in their own right. Mr. Greeley, oh, I actually did like this design and it was constructed and it looked really nice. So these are the three sketches. He went for the one in the middle. My favorite was this one where I played around with the circles. So this one is formal, lawn, patio. He wanted two patios, one in the back, one in the front. So the two patios are connected and a shed is there. So then that's just the lawn. He wanted more patio than lawn, okay? Uh, the second one here, and then the third one, which I thought was a lot a lot more moving, where you have a path that is sort of S-shaped there. Quite nice, I thought, but he didn't like it. So he went for this one, and that's the finished product. So this, this image is now the finished product. I drew by hand those days, and I did the three-dimensional version of it is there, okay? And Mrs. Dollar, that's when I started using a computerized program. So with Mrs. Dollard, I presented my design that way rather than by drawing. And I'm going to bring my uh, yeah, image there. So she wanted a formal garden. So that's the lawn, a little raised patio on the top, a shed. It's actually quite nice. It, it was constructed. I built it myself. It was my last garden. I will tell you the story of Mrs. Dollard another time. <laughs> and that's it, F finally constructed on the day when there was still a bit of tidying up to do to be done. Uh, this one is, yeah, once a shape is in place, drawing is all about decoration. So what I'm showing you here is some of my designs after the sketching process. So the sketch would have looked a lot more basic than that. And that is the finished product. That is the finished product, okay? So that is all, folks. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Don't worry because this lesson won't really make too, too much sense until you see me doing the sketching in real time, live. Uh, I'm gonna record myself talking out loud as I'm drawing so that you can enjoy the whole process. But anyway, I hope this opened the door to some of the more fundamental ideas. Um, if you have any questions, always write them down and we'll talk about it on the Google Meets. Bye. See you then.